Hi folks, in this tutorial we're looking at painting a weathered and chipped white industrial base for games such as Warhammer 40,000 or Necromunda. So grab your paints and let's get started. To start off with, I've given the base an all over spray coat of grey sear from Games Workshop. This is a lovely off-white colour and will do the bulk of the work for us. And this is it after it's been left to dry. The first colour I will be coming in with is Warplot Bronze from Games Workshop. Any dark brass or bronze colour will work here. And what we're going to be looking to doing is painting all the mechanical industrial parts, other recessed details of this base, such as the piping, boxes that might house electrical components, that sort of thing. And we're not looking to be particularly neat, as long as we don't get too much on the white, but basically covering all of the recessed details, because we can always add other colours to enhance this later. When painting miniatures, it's advised to thin down your paints with a little bit of water. And this is still true of metallics, but I would advise using less water than you would normally to thin down the metallic, as you can get some pigment separation. Just use it enough to help it flow off your brush and not to clog up any details. Remember with this stage, to leave this bronze metallic colour enough time to dry before we go and apply any other colours to the base, as if in all this is recessed detail, we don't want the colours to wet blend and merge with each other. Once the warp block bronze has dried, I am now coming in with some gory red from Vallejo. You can use any medium or bright red that you'd like here, and Mephiston Red is a good alternative from Games Workshop. And what you want to do here is paint in any gas canisters, cabling, anything else that you want to create a stark contrast between the white and the brassy tones. It doesn't have to be huge amounts, just anything that do you a little bit of contrast and colour spot. It's a really good thing if you can pick a colour that you've got on your models that are going onto this base to add as a nice colour to tie the miniature and the base together. Once the red has dried, we'll be then doing a pin wash with a thinned down contrast wildwood from Games Workshop. A pin wash is where we do a very controlled recess wash with a thin brush going between the panel lines and the deepest recesses of the detail. I have thinned the contrast paint quite heavily with water rather than medium as water is enough for what we need to do it for this purpose. With the water it then means that it's very easy to correct a mistake if we don't go straight into the recesses with this paint by taking a wet brush and soaking up the excess paint. The real secret with a pin wash is just to be slow and careful. If you find that it is quite difficult to keep your hands very steady to do these recess shades, it can be worth giving the model a gloss varnish coat. The gloss varnish can really help with the capillary action of this very thin paint going into the recesses. Once that's then dried, you can then give it a satin or matte coat over the top, then going on to the next stages. This is entirely optional of course, and I have skipped the gloss varnish stage. Do remember, as we've thinned this contrast paint down to almost like a wash consistency, it can take a while to dry. I would give this the time that you would give a wash to dry, so somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes is a really good sort of length of time to leave this contrast wash to dry before we move on to the next stage. It's helpful if you're doing this in batches, so if you're doing 10 or 15 bases, You'll probably find that the first one is dry by the time you've finished doing the panel recesses on the last base. With the panel wash complete, you can see that it makes a real difference to how the white panels really stand out on this base. Once our pin wash has dried, I'm now going to be dry brushing the base 
with an off-white. Here I'm using Ghost Grey from Vallejo, but Althea and Grey from Games Workshop is a suitable alternative. The real trick with dry brushing is to remove virtually all of the paint off the bristles of the brush until you have basically nothing left on it. The less paint that you have on it the better because with dry brushing you really want to build up colour rather than go straight to your highlight with the first pass. Now what I'm doing here is a mixture of backwards and forwards across the base and gentle circular motions. The gentle circular motions are really good for doing that soft transition and build up of colour and this is especially good on flat surfaces such as the square panels that we have here. We can go backwards and forwards over the ridges and the parallel lines but where we've got those big rectangular panels it's a very good thing to go in circular motions as it allows for that soft build up of colour without looking too stark and chalky as dry brushing can do. It can also help with dry brushing that the colour you are dry brushing over your base colour is a very subtle difference in colour. You're better off using a very slight transition in tone and building that up rather than going for a very stark difference in tone otherwise you can get some very strange looks. Here the ghost grey is only slightly more white than the grey sear spray so it does get us that nice soft build up and by the time we're finished with this we get a noticeable difference between the white on the top of the base and the grey sear we can see on the rim of the base. Once you are happy with the white dry brush layer, we are then going to come in with some worn foam brown and create a rust wash. To do this, I'm applying a little bit of worn foam brown to my palette and letting a lot of water to it. This is probably one to five paint to water ratio. And with this, I'm basically going to cover most of the base, making sure I'm to cover all the metallics and the red we did earlier, going over the recesses and over the flat panels. Whilst this paint is still wet on the base, I'll be using some paper towel or kitchen towel to dab away some of the paint to leave us with a stained, mucky and grimy appearance onto the white. This is really great as it leaves the browns into the recesses and the areas around them leaving a natural staining appearance. The real trick with this effect is to start with a little and build the effect up. It's very easy to add more of this dirty texture, but it's very difficult to take it away once you have applied it. With the rust wash complete, it should look something like this. Obviously you can do more or less depending on your taste. The last stage in painting this base is to do some sponge chipping with a dark brown colour. Here I'm using dried bark from Games Workshop, but you could use Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop or charred brown from Vallejo. The exact brown tone doesn't matter as long as it's quite dark. So, to do this chipping, you'll need a rough piece of foam. Here I'm using blister foam from a model, but you can also use a kitchen sponge. The idea here is that you tear a piece off and then tear the edges so that they are nice and rough and uneven. You then dip the sponge into the paint and then dab it on a paper towel or a piece of paper until you get most of the paint off, just like you would as if you were dry brushing. And then very gently, tap the sponge onto the model, or in this case our base, and very lightly build up the colour. You'll find that due to the rough nature of the sponge, it's going to leave these nice random patterns behind, which very much represent chipping and wearing of paint leaving primer underneath. And with this, you want to focus on corners and sharp edges, areas that would get knocked and scuffed and where paint would easily strip away and you want to apply a little and build this up. This is an effect where often you will find less is more, but the amount you will apply will vary depending on how much weathering you want to apply to the base. Mm -hmm. 
Once the sponge chipping has been applied, this white, grimy, dirty industrial base is now complete. All that's left to do now is to attach the model to the base and paint the rim of the base. I recommend using super glue to attach the model to the base as to not ruin the paint job underneath. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so to get updates on new tutorials just like this one. I hope this has given you lots of ideas and helped you with your modelling.